Hello everyone and welcome to this video guideline around the final project. Uh, this is part one of two videos and this video will focus particularly on the essay uh, and the part two will focus on the other options that students have for this paper. So the final project is 25% of your grade and it is due, er, there are three phases to this. So there's three parts to it that students are submitting um, as we move through the semester. The first is the final project proposal where you identify which final project you're going to be pursuing and provide some details about that. The second is the rough draft final project where you submit a, a rough draft of what your final project is. And the third is the final draft. So the purpose of these three is that the first part, the final project proposal, gives me a sense of what you're doing <clears throat> and helps me provide you with some ideas or ways of achieving that as well as to clarify that what you're doing is appropriate for a final project. The rough draft is due, uh, or I have the rough draft due to make sure that you've created or, or written a final project that is on track and that it's actually done on time. So you'll have the rough draft due about two weeks before the final project is due. And this is actually really useful for the student because that means when you come to that final final project um, due date, you have a lot less work to do. So your your finals week or the last week of class will be a bit less hectic than it would be for you otherwise. All right. So students are students have several different options around the final project. They can do a final essay, which this video will address. They can do a Wikipedia entry. They can do a LibriVox contribution. They can do a digital presentation. Or they have the open option in which they can propose what they want to do. So we'll talk about the final essay in this video. In the next video, we'll talk about the other options available. Uh, and just to note that if you are interested in options two through five, that is the Wikipedia entry through the open option, you really should be talking to me as soon as possible and we should start working together on this to make sure that uh, it gets to where it's, expo it's supposed to be so that your expectations and my expectations align properly. So let's talk about the final essay option. The word count for this is 1500 words. You can figure that's going to be about six to seven um, double spaced pages. And students have to, or students will have the option of answering one of the, the three questions that I'm going to show here. So they don't have, you don't have to answer all of them. They just, you only have to choose one and that's going to be what you write your essay about. So you're choosing one of these three. And to do that, you know, to write this, you should be relying on the course materials and previous works within the course, um, really to complete this essay substantively. And though you can use external resources, uh, I can't guarantee, depending on how much you use, that it's going to negatively impact your grade because the goal is for you, based upon everything you've learned within this course, to make a strong, clear argument based around the readings and the things that you've taken from this course. And so if you go and you do all this additional research, you take this other material, then it raises the question of are you applying what you've learned in this course or are you just using other people's works? <clears throat> Alright, so question one. Take one of the following themes or discuss one with the instructor and explain its presence and dynamics within the range of material read within the course. So these themes can include, so the goal of this essay uh, includes to explain the theme, to identify its role and significance in American literature, to evaluate the means by which it enhances meaning within the stories examined, or I should say within the writings examined, if we're not just dealing with stories, uh, it's anything written within this course, to evaluate the means by which it enhances American literature as a whole. So some possible themes to work with, gender, and it could be gender in, in general or masculinity and or femininity. Uh, minority identity, whether that's racial, ethni ethnic, or otherwise, um, or class in society, or the individual first society. So 
what you want to think about here is you want to take one of these possible themes and really explore that theme throughout a, a mixture of works that we've covered in this course. You can choose another theme, right? besides the ones that are listed here. But if you do, please let me know. Please contact me and say, this is the theme I'm looking to explore. You know, does it, is it on track? And most likely I'll say yes. I might have some feedback about whether it might need to be tweaked or not. But I, if a student has a theme they want to explore, I'm very excited to see that and to work with the student on that. So that's question one. Question two, what are some of the major elements or characteristics of American literature and how do they come through in the course readings? So the goal of this essay includes to be able to identify relevant elements of American literature, to, be, to piece together how such elements can be present in specific texts, to show how these elements are present in the same piece and how that helps enhance the meaning of the writing, to connect how these elements reoccur throughout literature, or in particular American literature. So what you're doing with this is you're, this is almost flipping that first question. You're saying here are some major elements of American literature. Here are some major traits, characteristics, what have you, of American literature. And then you're moving through a variety of writings within the course and identifying where they come up and how they come up and teasing them up. So you can see some of the close analysis, some of the quote analysis present within this, this essay and the previous essay. Um, and you want to keep in mind that warning down below, that caveat, uh, that any piece you discuss should have at least two of the themes you're discussing throughout the essay. That is, you shouldn't bring up, if, if you identify five major elements of American literature, anything that you discuss should have at least two of them. Uh, you shouldn't just discuss, well, here's this writing and it only addresses one. If these are major elements of American literature, then we should see them popping up everywhere in American literature. And so in any writing that you're discussing, there should be at least two. All right, so question three. Explore the major ideas and themes present in a particular reading from before 1750 and discuss the ways the ideas and themes presented in that in that writing reappear in other works throughout the rest of the course. So the goal of this essay is to include identifying major ideas present within an earlier piece, connecting those ideas and the author's influence to other material in the course, show clear comprehension of the influence of an early American literature on later writer uh, of early American literature on later writers. So what you're looking to do here is to kind of trace a, a line of influence from a writing from before 1750. So you want to look at all the writings that are before 1750 and, and choose one that you feel, well, this seems the ideas and the thoughts present within this writing come up time and again throughout, throughout literature that we study in this course. So what you'll want to do is you'll take that piece, you'll identify its major ideas that are important, that are relevant, and then you'll start to introduce these other works that also seem, if not directly influenced, to still be representing and invoking the issues, the challenges, the ideas, the themes that are present in that first text. So this is a bit of a chronological essay uh, in that you're kind of taking an earlier piece and then showing and connecting that to later pieces within American literature. All right, so those are the three essays. Um, those are the, your different choices on, on what you could write about. And if you have further questions, I, I'm happy to answer them. I do need to kind of go over, this is this page covers a lot, that what we're going to cover right now. Um, this is the requirements for all essays. That is, all essays must meet these criteria. Um, and they may seem like a lot, but the goal, one of the goals that I've been wa working with you throughout this course is to make sure that you don't just cover the same thing time and again, but that you have a good range of different writings that you can talk about in meaningful ways. And so this is going to, this is what I have as a means to make sure that happens. So within any uh, essay, you must use at least three quotes. They should be purposeful, meaningful quotes, uh, not just tossed in there for whatever sake. The quote, of course, does not count towards your word count. And the quotes um, can
can be short or long, but generally shouldn't exceed 75 words. Uh, you really do, uh, you know, as I've said in the in different guidelines uh, within this within this course, you really want to keep your quotes short and concise as possible. In the quotes, you must have at least three different you must have three quotes from three different works by three different authors. So again, here I'm looking for variety. I don't want three quotes from Benjamin Franklin. If you have a quote from Benjamin Franklin, a quote from Thomas Paine, and a quote from Ralph, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, perfect. But you really do want to make sure you look for variety. And it makes sense also that if you're making an argument about the importance or the consistency of themes, that you're able to look to different works. And you certainly can use more than three quotes, but you should not be using less than three quotes. In any essay, you need to discuss a minimum of five works read from this course. Right, so you can't just discuss two or three works. And any of the works that we're looking at, or any of the essays that we're looking at, in order to make a meaningful argument, you should have at least five works because you're you're discussing, you know, longevity. You're t discussing influence. You're discussing significance with American literature. Well, you can't really do that if you're only discussing two works. So again, those five works must be from five different authors. So you can't just do, say, five poems from Emily Dickinson. You have to find five different authors. The discussion of the work must be a central part of your discussion. So you can't just briefly say, yes, and you know this theme is also relevant in Self-Reliance by Ralph Waldo Emerson. There, I discussed it. You actually have to have it more meaningful. You sh it should be substantially present in your paper. This is not a hard and fast rule, but generally there should be at least 10 years difference between each of the selections. And what I'm looking for here, I'm not, you know, 10 is not an absolute must have, but your writings that you choose should be spread out chronologically. If you have five writings all from 1715, then you're not really meeting this idea of properly representing the breadth of American literature that we've looked at in this course. Um, you can use more than five, but not less, and I would generally recommend not to do more than seven unless you're going reasonably over the 1500, which I'm always happy for students to go over 1500, um, but if you're getting past 2000, you're probably going a little bit too far. Contextualize the particular work and the authors discussed. So use class discussions and background material provided. In other words, any writing that you're going to talk about in these essays, you want to give some context around the author, around the work. So you shouldn't just be saying, and I'm going to now talk about this and tell you nothing about this. It sh you should be able to give some context. You must include relevant citations. Um, you should be citing when using quotes. Citing when paraphrasing background information if taken from another source. So if it's something within the course you don't need to cite, but if you've gone and done some background on an author, that should be cited. Cite when discussing specific moments and events from written pieces. Right. So if you're talking about a particular passage, even if you're not quoting, rule of thumb would say you want to you would want to cite that particular author in page. And the reason being is that if you're giving, if you're talking about a specific moment, you're most likely giving an interpretation, and you want to make sure that your reader can go to that passage very quickly, access that passage, and, and really break down what it is that you're saying, or, or see what you're saying versus what is actually said. Make sure when you are citing that citations come at the end of the sentence before the period and look like this. So if you were citing from Edwards, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, it would be Edwards, comma, in the page number, end parentheses, period. Selections, um, so a few notes here, you cannot use the central work of your close analysis or your article analysis, uh, or your quote analysis for that matter. In other words, if you are going to talk about the central work for your close or quote, your article, your close analysis, your quote analysis, um, that needs to be work number six or work number seven. You need at least five works that you have not discussed before in formal writing. 
Uh, students must choose at least two of the works that they have read but not blogged about. So again, at least two of the works that you're going to be writing about you should not have blogged about at this point. So the goal here is really just to make sure you're covering a wide range of things. If you run into trouble around this, by all means, shoot the instructor an email, you know, let, let me know what's going on and we can you know, try to tweak this, but really the, these requirements are there to really push you to get a wider range and cover things you haven't covered yet. All right, any questions, please let me know. Um, let me know if, if this all makes sense or where you might have concerns, and thank you very much for watching.